Welcome to another podcast of the current situation Manchester United. Now in this video, I know I said that in my last match reaction video that I was going to do an overall season review of a Manchester United playing the season, but I'm going to renege on that decision and I'm going to reconsider and say in this video I'm going to do at least a 25 minute video on our season in the Premier League only, not in all competition, in the Premier League only, you know, the highs, the lows, and the lows, you know. So, that's what I'm going to be talking about. Um, So, yeah, this is going to be at least 25 minutes. I don't want to mislead you guys into thinking it's going to be 50 when it's going to, when it end up being like 55 minutes. I don't want to be doing that. So, with that being said, first things first. Now, let me show you how delusional a brother like me I am. And I know some of you guys are saying, man, bro, no offense, you need to cut your hair, bro. You need to look after your hair, I know what you're saying, bro, but my, the thing with me is that I like to hear, I like to let my hair grow out because I know that this is not the highest my hair has grown. You see me? This is not the highest. So I'm going to let it grow out until I'm ready to make the decision to cut it. But I appreciate the concern. Thank you for looking out for, brother. Now, in relation to Manchester United, because it's not a hair related video, the thing is this. I'm going to show you how delusional a brother like me is. Seeing before the season started in the Premier League on the seventh, uh, before the 17th of August of last year, I predicted that Manchester United would finish third. Now, I don't know what gave me that reclusion to make that decision, but for some reason, I thought Manchester United would finish third. Third in the Premier League. Not third from bottom, not third from the top six, not third from the top eight. Third in the Premier League table. <laughs> you see me? I was saying, yeah, you know, I guess I was trying to be one of one of those, you know, happy go, you know, those happy Man United fans just for the positivity. Oh yes, man, we go finish third, man. You know, we finished third the last season. So, you know, we made a few, you know, signings. I'm gonna get into that in a second. So we I guess we can improve this season because we have everything up. And that we we won the Capital One Cup the previous season. So we can probably win a trophy this season. But as in the first game against Wolves, man, I, I, at heart, I wasn't positive. I, I, wasn't, I was displeased with the recruitments in the transfer window. I was displeased because we didn't get us. Uh, 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 we get we get Hoyland, but we didn't get Harry Kane. And Harry Kane was, on the, uh, was, was uh, for, not only for sale, but he was available. You see me? And I would think that he would at least stay at one more season, at least in the Premier League, to try or catch up with, um, or at least two more seasons to try catch up with Alan Shearer's goal scoring record in the Premier League. So what better club not what what better club to sign for than Manchester United? Is me? We need a we need a striker, a centre forward, a senior striker that is seasoned, ripe. You know, in he's in his full age. You know, um, Harry Kane. Boy, didn't get Harry Kane. We get some young youth from Atlanta. That's just 20. I've never heard of this guy. I've heard of Haaland, but I've never heard of Hoyland. I've never heard of Hoyland. Never heard of this guy. And this guy, sign of, this guy got signed for us for 80 mil. And he was injured. What? So anyway, this the, uh, the, our season... The key point is, is that I wasn't up with Mount. No, this is not based on transfer. So let me just cut all through the 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 the, the, the unnecessary stuff and save for another video for next week after the FA Cup final. Um, our season in the Premier League was atrocious, and I don't think that is. You know, I don't think that's break. I think, uh, dude, I think a third year old knows that we didn't play well in the Premier League. We did not play well in the Premier League. This is our worst season since the Moyes season when Moyes go get suck in May of 2014. Yeah. This is our worst season, man. I don't even think we get Premier we I don't even think we get um I don't even think we get European qualification. Okay, I do dude if we qualify for your if we qualify for European Conference League, that's an embarrassment. This is Manchester United. Zine, this is not no no local club down the street. We should not be we should not be qualifying for no European number one European League and for for sure never European Conference League. Is me so you know what that means? We're going to be playing at if we qualify for European Conference League, which I believe is the case. That means eh, we go go to some places away from home where the football pitch they don't have grass. 
And if they have grass, it's very muddy. And if it's not muddy, it's not smooth. And if it's not smooth, man, at least 10 or, or, or 20 fans go be there. And most of the fans that are going to be there is for Manchester United side. And where they away side. Is me so it goes so 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 it's, it's an embarrassment, man. If this is deep more into but our season, let me get to the seat, man. I'm all over the place. Our game against Wolves. Now, I was expecting us to win, you know. I mean, this is just Wolves, you know, this is just Wolves. But in the game, I watched the game, couldn't even score a goal. Now, our midfield, yes, we have been beaten on that midfield all season. All season we've been meeting on that midfield. Our midfield, dude, you could put like three John Cena's in our midfield. It wouldn't make no difference because, dude, it, 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 that's that's how we that's how we played against Wolves. They cut through our midfield. Like I believe one of the the players, man, I don't remember his name, go run through our midfield. We couldn't even catch him up, and it, and it had to come to the defense in the defense of the team to cut him down, and he ran through our midfield to the defense. That's a, that's embarrassment, man. And it took a set piece for us to go score through Varan, who is leaving this season at the end of uh, his contract, which is end of this uh, end of this season, to go score the first goal, the first and only goal in that game. That's embarrassing, man. But the key pointer to our season is that we cannot see our games, and this is exclusive. I'm excluding the Champions League. The Carabao Cup and the FA Cup. This is just Premier League only. We are very consistently inconsistent. This is me. And we are insistent on allowing the opposing side to have the momentum. Dude, why are we playing catch up? Why are we being reactive? Why are we playing, you know, uh, 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 why, 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 why are we playing, uh, what are you call now? Yeah, why, why are we playing reactive? I can't remember the word right now, man. Why we can't play on the front foot? Why we can't be proactive, man? Why are we why are we not playing aggressive in the first minute? We have to go wait until him go score one goal first to go score the goal to equalize. And then after we go equalize, we go score another goal and take the lead. Why we have to do that? Oh, you know, with the king of comebacks, you know, dude, that hey man, yo. That is not a style of play. If it get if you think so that's a style of play. Then you don't know football. That is a plan. If we're losing, like we're losing in the, against Bayern Munich in the 1999 Champions League final, why would we want to, 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 to intentionally go down for us to just come back? We were not expecting to lose that final. The, the reality is that they got score a deflected free kick, take the lead, and it took until the, the later than 90 minutes for us to go equalize and get a win goal. But that's not a style of play. A style of play is an, a proactive transition of how a, a team plays football. If I go show you the style of play of Barcelona through, from 2008 to 2012, you know you know how Barca plays already. And, I, I'm, and I'm just showing you a 30 second clip. <laughs> but you get the, the gist of how them play. And even if them lose him, and them go still have themselves play, they not go rare going to you know ditch themselves play, and play route one like Stoke in two thousand ten. They're not gonna be doing that. Them play them football, and it's and they're gonna use they're going to rely on some small man that is five foot four, and has the number ten jersey on the back, and he's gonna score some individual goal. That is the reliance if things not going as smooth. So even them, even if their main self play doesn't go to plan, they have one man to rely on in terms of getting goals. You see me? But back to Manchester United, we don't. We have been saying this since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Even since yeah, Ole Gunnar, so I, I I I created my channel in two thousand twenty, and that was after Jose Mourinho. So I'm not going to say I've been saying it while Jose Mourinho was at Manchester United. But since Mori since Ole was at Manchester United as permanent manager. I've been saying that we needed an implemented style of play to portray and display on the football pitch. We don't have a unique style of play. A transitional style of play. Dude, I believe that we were we, we were caught on. You know I, mean? I believe we were caught on because some this guy, everything hog, 
came, gave us the, 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 the impression to this guy go play proper football. The Dutch football that they play at Ajax, at Manchester United. And we got hoodwinked, man. We got, we got run over. As Malcolm X would say, we got bamboozled, man. We have not been seen at football. And I don't want to be hearing, oh, we don't, we don't want the players do, man. I don't care if you have Bebe or, or, or um, Fellaini. It doesn't matter what players you have. If them players, even if they're not good enough, and you still stick with your self-play, that self-play, will, will, you, will, you will see that self-play. It may not come off as smooth because it's not their first team players, but that self-play is, is still going to be in effect. It's because it's drilled into the heads of the players. So they go play it out on the football pitch. But with Manchester United, you don't see that. Against Wolves, you don't, you don't see that man. It had to take a defender, Varane, to go score that. And it's a defender that doesn't stay fit. Hoyland, as a striker, in the Premier League, um, this video is based on the Premier League, it had to take this bridge in four months. He came in sept uh, late August, August, September, October, November. About four or five months for this guy to get his first bread baked in the Premier League, his first goal. And it and it was a goal and it was a goal that won us the game, which is good. But not to be done on Hoyland, you know, because he's a young striker, but the chances he, he he got, man. And I'm going to play and I'm going to defend Hoyland somewhat because even though Bruno Fernandez is our main creator. Bruno Fernandes has been have had has had disastrous games, man. Where he hasn't created for not only the striker Hoyland, but for the other teammates around him. He's hoofing balls. I don't even know if this person is playing cricket. He's licking sixes. I think I thought this guy was Chris Gale, and he's not a cricketer. Does it mean so? Our biggest downfall was that midfield. Casimiro, yes, Casimiro is big in name only, but person saying, oh, you can't play Casimiro defensive midfield. He's not a defensive midfielder. Okay. But if you're a work class, if you're a work class player, that means they can play in different positions. Oh no, 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 no. Hey, hey, hey. You say he's work class. If he's a work class midfielder, he can play in different positions in midfield. If he's not an attacking midfield, then cool. He's not an attacking midfield. But if you're talking about the box, the box, the holder as a number six, or or you know, um, what what whatever self play midfield apart from the number ten, he's good there. So it does it doesn't matter where he plays in midfield, man. If you're a, if you're an A list actor, you have different ranges. You don't just play one type of actor, cause you're a world class actor. You're an A list celebrity, man. You're not known as an illustrator because you just know to play one role in an acting gig. Same thing with football. So I don't want to be hearing all this big talk, man. And even though Casimir is not world class, that's not the point. The point is that Casimir, with the experience that he's had at Real Madrid, should have known better and brought that experience in our midfield. And it took us... Yes, we're, we, we were crying for him. It took us until November to play against Liverpool away from home to go bring Kobe Minor into the queue into in, in to start into actually getting games into the Premier League to make a big difference, you know me, because Mark Tomlin is not no <laughs> midfield to make to to make any difference, man. He can score goals when we need him to, but in terms of making the midfield tick to pull the strings like Pirlo, he's not that type of guy. Mark Tomney is not that type of guy. Rashford, last season, well, this season just finished. Uh, the season before last, uh, when he go get them 30 goals, where's that Rashford? Where's that Rashford? Where's that Rashford, man? See, that this is one of the biggest critics of Marcus Rashford at Manchester United. It's not that we know we know he cannot score. He can. But the fact is that he's so wishy-washy, we don't even know where his head is at. Couple of years back, it was about the injury. Oh, you know, he's playing through an injury. You know, give him time and he's going to come around. Couple uh, in the COVID season, oh, you know, you know, 
Yes, he's he's looking after the kids. He's giving them free lunches and so forth. But you know, he's trying to be a good Samaritan. He's looking out for the the poor kids in the community. I I, remember, I get that, but he's a footballer, a young footballer, not a Salvation Army, you know, uh, activist. Is me? He's a footballer and he needs to focus on football. Is me? He needs to focus on that. But none of that does really matter because even now with those two things aside. He's still not playing football. He's not injured. And last last time I checked, he he hasn't been at least you know in publicly. He hasn't been giving food to the to the to the to the to the kids. So that's not an excuse, man. He has been an under firing forward in this season. I don't even think he has more than fifteen goals in our competition. And Anthony. Bless your soul, isn't me? God bless your soul because <laughs> dude, if if you if if a meme was a footballer, you would be that footballer. You'd be that guy. You'd you be that guy. You haven't shown us what you, you have you have had key moments, but I'm talking in the Premier League only. You have one Premier League goal to your name. One Premier League goal. That doesn't I claim the big price tag that we signed you for, 90 mil or 100 mil. You haven't shown that you're a key player in our squad. It had to take Ganacho and later in the season and Am Ama Diallo or 60 minutes to catch up, to take your spot in the, in the starting level. But in the Premier League, I know I'm, I'm beating all over the place. You have to forgive a brother. That's just how I am. The main MFO I mentioned one is that our midfield was weak and I and I went on a five to ten minute five to ten minute a five to ten minute tirade rant about that. Other weaknesses that we cannot see our games. We take the lead, we lead in, we, we, we giving them we, we give them the, 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 the freedom to equalize. I can say that about our game against Liverpool at home. Our game against Chelsea away from home and uh, a couple of games I'm, I'm missing right now where we conceded we conceded unnecessary goals. Why are we doing that? Why are we playing up to the opposing side like that? We've lost games at home, man. 3-0... A born mouth go beat us win at home. Not only did they beat us win at home, we didn't we couldn't even score, man. At home. In front of 75 to at least 85 fans. 85,000 fans. Do you know how much fans that is? That's not that's excluding the away fans from board mouth. So it's more than that. And I'm go witness a throbbing. Performance from Bournemouth and Manchester United and Manchester United own turf. And that game, one the, the one of the big things that in that season is that we lost games at home. We cannot be losing games at home, man. That is our fortress, our fortitude, our home. Letting them beat us 3 0 at home is like letting ups come in our own home. And have sex with our wife in front of our face, man. That's how disrespectful it is. We can't allow that. And because if and, and see if that continues, man, the respect that sides had against us at our own term is going to go down. It's going to decrease. It's going to diminish. And it might just disappear to zero, where they have zero respect for us at home. We can't allow that. Now, 14 defenders were used in our defense in uh, across the face of this season. The Premier League, I believe, are across it. But the point is that we use various defenders in our defense. Um, that just proves that our, we need a couple of defenders, and I've been saying it. Vran is leaving. We don't know how long Johnny Evans is going to hold out. Or Maguire is just a ticking time and you don't know when he's going to, you know, through, through a, 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 a shocking bombshell of a performance. So you can't rely on him. 
the French young guy, I'm, I do like I said, man, if Joe Solanke, if Solanke is sitting here down like that, dude, man, and Joe Solanke plays for Bournemouth, funnily enough, I just talk about Bournemouth, what, what potential do we have as a defense? So, so the point is that we, we, are, we need to strengthen our defense. We cannot just rely on an injury-prone Licha Martinez. He's injury-prone. He's prone to having injuries. One Misaka, proper defender, defensively. Dalo, who is becoming more polished in his game, more mature, which is what I admire. Um, but we still need fullbacks, bro. Luke Shaw, I saw a stat where he missed the amount of a lot of minutes. And you know what this stat say? And this is and this is not exactly word for word, so hear me out but it said that if you go mount up to the games he missed and the minutes he missed that's like six six seasons bro six seasons he's been here since 2014 mm -hmm. and the minutes him go miss the games him go miss could have been six seasons so he's unreliable we cannot rely on this guy man if this if you drown in I go call Luke Shaw Luke Shaw ain't go save you he's unreliable he cannot rely on this guy to save you so we can't allow we can't rely on him in our defense at left back we can't do that we can't do that another weakness in our game was that we didn't we were not clinical in certain games and I just talked about the forward line but I'll talk about it again it just shows that we lack that ex we lack experience in our forward line. We can't rely on Rashford. Rashford, as how much goals him score for Manchester United is not a senior forward where persons can look up to and say, you know, one day I want my kid to be like Mark. I don't man, nobody can go say that. So he doesn't have that seniority in his squad. Maybe with the youngsters from the youth academy, because he came from the youth academy. But if you're if you're aspiring to be some big player, man. You ain't go, you're not going to rely on Marcus Rashford, man. Rashford, man. <laughs> I ain't going to be doing Rashford. But Rashford is not the player that you, you go look up to and say, this is the guy I want my kid to be like. Not be like me. Like that guy. He's very talented. Mentally strong. Great player. Please ain't go, man. Please, man. Come on. So, um, what else? Hold on. Uh, Another thing we have to remember, bro, is that um, we cannot, yeah, so we can, we have to be clinical. We have to be clinical. We have to take chances. This is the Premier League, and we need we need players that are, we that can, that can adapt to the Premier League quickly or already adapted to the Premier League. We need those players, and I have two minutes to go. So the main emphasis of this season is that we gave away games where we were leading and we lost them, or we we were winning and we go draw the games and we were winning in the first place. Is me, our defense wasn't on point. The biggest problem was that our midfield was just like butter man, and our position was like a knife. They cut through us just like that, just with the ease, man, just with the ease, not even with effort, just with ease. Seriously, we can't allow that, man. And see, with everything Hug look like everything will go say for one more season or at least for next season. I question I, I know say it's early to question, but if he go stay, bro, how things go look next season with what we saw last season in the summer when his bridge go save Mount's career by you know taking taking him off of the books of Chelsea. And Chelsea don't want this guy. Hmm? So the main emphasis as I'm wrapping up right now, and leave your comments if you have been watching upon this point, leave on you leave your comments below in the comment section. Like and subscribe to the channel. If you disagree, leave your disagreements in the comment section and we'll have a go at it in the comment section. But the main gist is this man. This is our one of our worst seasons ever on paper. Ever. Eric Tenghag has broken worse records than you saying bolt. And you and this guy is not no sprinter. He hasn't broken no world record, but he's broken more in bad records since the 1920s, since Prohibition in the United States.
And we're not in the United States. This is UK playing football. And he's broken records since that era. I'm out of here, so. Comments down below in the comment section. Um, leave your comments down below in the comment section. Like and subscribe to the channel. With that being said, our brother is out. Yeah, I'll see you next Sunday after the FA Cup final. Talking about all the things that happened this season. The players, the good players, the bad players, the players that need shipping. All of that, next video. I'm out.